uh, this was this uh, opening sequence and the end were both shot at the at the uh, the back of the schedule, um, which was important for the film because it, it you met him after he'd been playing you know for me he'd been playing the part for two months shooting the other sequences so here this first this first piece he was very very practiced in talking to the camera and he was practiced in in, in in the character and I wanted him to play it very very broad you know as broad as he could play it um, the funnier it would be um, parents really wanted to believe that he was uh, you know that he was telling them the truth uh, his his sister who was one of his two nemesis um, knows that he's 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 lying, um, and he's he's a little he's actually he's a little cruel. Um, he does taunt her a little bit. Uh, you know, I needed to motivate her sufficiently so that uh, you know to justify her obsessiveness. You know about 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 catching him and and and, and uh, putting him in his place. After after the film wrapped, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bueller in in real life got married. Uh, at the time that we were shooting this, uh, uh, Jennifer Grey and Matthew were were dating. It was kind of a strange situation because everybody in this scene is in love. He's really wonderful in this scene. He he played it as a he played it as a child. Um, you know, every every parent has the most affectionate uh, memories of their children are when they are children. And Ferris knew this very, very well, and uh, played it completely. And they they bought it completely, which drives his sister insane because she she's always one upped by him. She was originally she was a middle child. There were two uh, there were two young characters that I ended up cutting out, which put Jeannie in the position of being in the middle, which explained a lot of her aggression. Um, the the room I actually decorated uh, a lot of it myself. Um, it kind of looks like my room in high school. I had every square inch of my room covered with pop uh, uh, music record sleeves and, and photographs cut out of English pop magazines. And I thought that his room should really reflect uh, his mind, which it should be filled with lots of interesting, unrelated stuff. There's an old um, MTV logo that was... I, I liked it because it was very noisy. I used a song by uh, this, this band called Zig Zig Sputnik... Um, it was a uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good song. It fit well, uh, but at the time it was a really crass piece of pop commercialism, which I thought uh, thought worked very well for the story. Um, there's a squirrel outside his room on a, on a telephone wire, um, which I thought I needed because I was this this sequence was shot on a stage at Paramount. And to avoid it looking too false, I wanted something real. So we had um, we had two squirrels trained to run along a wire. The first one uh, ran away, just left. He's probably still in that stage. Uh, the second one had stage fright and just clung to the uh, to the wire. Uh, everybody always thought it was a fake squirrel, but it was actually a a real squirrel. He was just catatonic. The uh, the graphics on the screen. This was done in post production. Um, I thought that the scene was just a little flat, a little, exp you know, it was just pure exposition. So I had the shot repositioned and I wrote these little instructions, which I thought were sufficiently stupid. 